Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on our webinar talking about just different job creation workflows and function point. Uh, we have hit the top of the hour, but I still see a few people just kind of sneaking in. So we're just going to give a one minute warning here. So to whoever needs to quickly fill up their coffee or, you know, have a quick bio break, go ahead and do that. And we'll uh, we'll talk to you all in a minute. Okay, Sophia, I just gave you a presenter, I believe. Thank you, Jimmy. Yes, I was having a, a minute there being like, oh, no, I can't share my screen. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Why don't we get started? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Jimmy, thank you for always being my excellent co-pilot. Love sharing webinar time with you. Um, so we are going to be work talking today about job creation workflows. Um, now, I know this can be a pretty simple topic at times, uh, but we're going to talk about the two main ways that we can really um, get started and, and begin your work within Function Point today. And I'm pretty excited about talking about it. Um, but let's just quickly go through some of our agenda items first before we dive in. So my name is Sophia Wilson. Uh, I'm the manager of customer experience here at Function Point. Uh, probably a lot of you have um, talked to me on the phone at some point. Uh, you know, I always, always love jumping on. Um, so, uh, you know, thanks again for joining today. We also have Jimmy Wu, who is my excellent co-pilot. He is our director of sales and marketing. So probably a lot of you have also had a chance to talk with him at some point as well, whether it is in, um, you know, your, your sales uh, process or even later Later on as we're sort of interviewing about your experiences here at Function Point. Uh, so Jimmy is my co-pilot today. He's going to be answering lots of questions in the back end um, of the webinar. Uh, so please shoot them back there. Uh, try and throw him off. If you give him really hard things, he'll also save them and make me do it on screen, which is always entertaining as well. Um, just something else really important to note, if anything's maybe too specific to you and your agency and your workflow um, and you know it's maybe a, a little too elaborate to tackle on the webinar today uh, don't worry we will be in touch with our success team so that we can actually sort that out together and maybe do a little bit more consulting to make sure that um, what we have set up is right for you and and your team so our agenda today, what we're gonna be talking about is uh, starting new jobs. What are some of our best practices for starting new jobs within Function Point? Uh, I know probably a lot of you have gone through probably our onboarding and have um, gone through our, our very first session, which is creating estimates and jobs. But I always just like to reiterate and really hit home on some of our uh, top items that are really great um, to help you build effective estimates within Function Point. Then from there, we're going to be talking about, again, those two main workflows that we have within FP. And um, 
really with the start of these, that's by starting it by creating a schedule or starting it through creating your estimate first. Both of those options are available to you. So anyone that has maybe always only just done it by creating an estimate or just done it by creating a schedule first, uh, we're gonna quickly go through both options today. Um, so looking forward to also hearing how you prefer to do it and maybe if you even do a mixture of both. Next, I'm going to go through just like the different types of jobs. So again, um, you know, I've, I've worked with Function Point and agencies for a number of years, uh, and we have found that there are kind of some top different types of jobs that are very regularly found within creative agencies. So I'm going to quickly go through some of those definitions and just show kind of some quick examples within Function Point as well on how some of those have been set up and may be able to help you with your workflow. Again, if we don't get into the nitty gritty that you really wanted today, don't hesitate to reach out to our success team so that we can work with you to make sure that you are set up for success in your system. And then a huge question that I always get asked is the difference between projects and jobs. Um, so we'll quickly go through those definitions. And then something else I will make sure I do as well when we pop into Function Point um, is there is the ability to change some terminology. So I'll show kind of where the projects versus jobs live on your in your system itself um, and some of the commonly used different terms that might be there, uh, just in case you know, you've ever run into some issues looking at some of our um, documentation in the past and it's like, this doesn't match my system. It's probably because the terminology has been changed to better match your agency. Um, so, but however, the location of those items within your system always remain in the same spot. So um, uh, it should be able to help you when, when looking at any of that sort of stuff in the future. Okay, so workflow options, what we have, We've got our first one, um, which of course is starting with a schedule. So there are lots of agencies that I work with and I chat with, um, and they're like, you know what, I, I really don't actually know how many hours it may take to complete this piece of work right off the bat. And so a lot of those agencies find that it is more useful for them to start by building out their schedule and their timeline within Function Point to start. So they know what all the different moving pieces are and they know that X number of hours are required for each task. Um, but then, it, as I'm sure a lot of you know, you may have four or five tasks that lead into a single service when it comes to your time tracking later on. And you may not know what that sort of bulk time may be for that single service. So that's why you find it more useful to start with the schedule by building out each of those tasks and the number of hours each of them require. Um, Again, a lot of agencies I've worked with, it's kind of sometimes that butting of heads between a potential AE and a project manager where an AE may be building out an estimate and be under um, estimating the number of hours things take. So that's where it can be really helpful for them to be working directly with the project manager at the start to build out that schedule together, um, collaborate a little bit, and then move towards building that estimate that can be more accurate for your client later. Because ultimately, what all of our main goals are when it comes to using Function Point is, of course, being able to measure your profitability. And if you are underestimating the number of hours that you expect things to take and go over um, and you may be billing by estimated or fixed amounts later, that can really mess up some of those numbers for you. So you do want to be able to make sure that you are being extremely accurate at this estimating stage. I know it seems so simple, but it, it really can be quite a core piece of your workflow. And then of course, probably the one everyone is super familiar with is starting with an estimate. So again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. It is one of the most standard workflows and most used workflows within Function Point. Um, and that is why we have a lot of extra capabilities around being able to uh, create some estimate templates so that you know the number of hours that things tend to take. Um, it, you know, when you need to just quickly send off an estimate to a client, um, this is definitely a very well oiled machine and, and you're going to know exactly what is required. This is usually maybe used for some smaller projects. Um, that maybe don't have too many line items where something like a schedule could be used on a on a much larger scale for something that's going to span over maybe um, months or even years. Jimmy, I'm seeing that question box pop up already. Should sh is there any questions that I should be tackling right now before I go into the, our next slide? Uh, no, I think I got them. Um, just a reminder: the questions is in your Go to Webinar control panel on the right hand side. So feel free to type questions in at any point. Mm -hmm. Again, 
try and stump Jimmy, um, even though, again, if you do that, then you'll probably maybe be stumping me. So that could be extra fun for everybody today. <laughs> All right, so let's go into some different types of jobs. So again, oh, Sophia, um, did you want to do the poll? Um, I, I was going to actually do that when we jumped into the system. Okay, cool. Yeah. Don't worry, everyone. We've got a fun poll coming your way, too, as Jimmy just ruined. Gosh, no, I'm kidding. Okay, so we're going to jump into some different types of jobs. So again, from working with agencies, myself and Jimmy, we were talking about this earlier today on some different types that we find people really work with. The first one being quick jobs. So this could be a quick turnaround or a single day um, job that would not really require a schedule. It could be something that your um, client literally calls you that morning being like, ah, I just need maybe even a quick edit done or a quick adjustment made to our website. Any chance you can turn around this today. Um, and it, you know, this may be one of those things that it's actually so quick that you don't even want to have to go through creating a job for yourself. Now, of course, all of you that are on here know that estimates and jobs are required within Function Point. Um, so I'm going to quickly show you how you can maybe have, say, a standing job for clients that you know maybe do regular things like this, or if you know that you are kind of like a quick turnaround agency like that, and you can have, again, sort of a standing miscellaneous or um, you know business development job that would live against each of your clients so as time is tracked against it you can just quickly invoice for that later on um, for any actuals that were tracked uh, during maybe that week or month um, again depends on your agreement that you may have with your customer um, but again it would be sort of it would always live in your system. Uh, you would be able to maybe, it, it wouldn't necessarily require a schedule, but, but you may want to just create a quick task that you would be able to send off to the individual you know has the, the time and availability to um, complete that that day or week maybe um, and, uh, and have them track time to that task uh, and then you can bill accordingly later on as needed. Probably one of our most common types of jobs are medium or large jobs. So again, they could have a few moving pieces. Um, most likely they would require a schedule to complete um, that piece of work. Uh, you know, there are times where it could be an even larger piece of work and it could be stored um, within a project uh, and have multiple schedules uh, moving within that. Um, again, the medium size probably be a single job with a single schedule, could span over weeks, maybe a couple months. Um, but again, you would want to have that timeline mapped out so that you can see each piece, probably create dependencies as needed, um, and work with more than, than a single individual with, within your team that, that would um, be accountable for helping to complete that job. So again, the, the, the size there is really um, more the time, number of people, and uh, how many moving pieces there may be in there. And then of course, there's always the good old retainer style. So those of you that maybe joined us a few weeks ago when we held our retainer webinar, um, you know, this is also a great resource if you maybe have questions in regards to retainers themselves. But you know, pretty standard, they're usually repeatable work uh, that could require multiple job schedules to complete. Um, they could be simple, they could be more robust and elaborate. Um, again, that's usually an agreement that you have with your client um, on repeatable uh, work or um, a set scope, or potentially even not a set scope. It really is is up to you. Retainers are, are an ever, um, evolving uh, style I, I find these days. So um, it really depends on, on what your agreement is and, and we can set that up and make sure it's organized for you and, and organized appropriately so that you can report and invoice accordingly. Um, so all of you definitely heard me talk about projects and storing jobs within that um, already today. So there are two kind of main pieces that are, are always working within Function Point. Obviously jobs, Estimates and jobs, they are required to be able to work within FP. Um, you can't move forward without an estimate and a job. I've kind of always used the metaphor of like, it's the tree and it's sort of that trunk that is required for any like branches to be um, added to in regards to like time, expenses, invoicing, briefs, schedules, all those sorts of pieces that, that make up the job itself. But creating that job and estimate um, is super important. So this is the most basic piece of work or deliverable that you would want to build and track within FP. Then what we have following that is, of course, projects. Projects 
I kind of like to call it a folder or say a quote unquote filing system that you would use within function point to store and organize multiple jobs or deliverables within. So it is, it is again, just kind of like a, a great space to be able to make sure that you keep each of those moving pieces that may be required for completing your piece of work um, in one space so that um, you can stay organized. Again, anyone that has talked to me, you all know how a little bit OCD I am when it comes to your organization within Function Point and making sure everything is clean because everything leads back to your reporting and your invoicing later. And, and I know how that is such an important piece of it. So projects, um, by storing all those multiple jobs, deliverables within that, uh, it really helps you with that, that organization piece. Um, and then for invoicing later, it, it really makes things a lot easier. Say if you wanted to do um, batch or single multi-job invoicing later so that you could actually have maybe if you have say five jobs that are associated with one project and you just want to send off a single invoice to your client you can do that later on as well so again huge advocate for projects over here but if you are only having say a single job probably don't need a project um, there have been times I've, I've worked with agencies that have a project with only a single job in it um, and that is more in preparation for future jobs to be added in. But if you know it's only going to be a single one, you probably don't need to worry about doing that. Okay, excellent. So just to finish off our slides here today, uh, you know there are the, the questions box uh, that's happening over on the side right now. Jimmy is manning that, answering all of your questions. Um, however, you know, say tonight you wake up in a bit of a tizzy realizing you had a great question um, and you're you're upset that you didn't ask it on the webinar today. Don't be afraid to email success at functionpoint.com. Our entire team will be here to help you. Um, you know, again, our goal is to make you successful within Function Point. Uh, so reaching out to that email inbox, you'll have access to all of us uh, who can help you with your questions, concerns, um, whether we can, you know, send you a quick answer via email or maybe organize a call with you because you need a little bit of consulting to talk out um, maybe your scenario, we're here to help with that. On top of that, we actually have some exciting new news. So our product team has launched a new ideas portal. I will show you where that lives when we get into the system. Um, don't worry if you have ever submitted an idea or suggestion through the old portal, we did bring all of that over into the new one. Um, uh, so it is all still there and it is all still being considered. Um, but what we would really like everyone to do is go in and vote. So we are working right now on prioritizing, um, you know, our future roadmap for next year on quick wins and little things that we're going to be able to do um, as long uh, alongside working on, um, you know, thinking about what our next big projects are going to be. Uh, you know, we have lots of exciting things coming down the line for this fall. Uh, everyone should have seen our, our notifications on that. So we're pretty stoked. Um, but again, we want to make sure that we're mapping out next year as well. So go in, sit down, go and vote on everything. Uh, if you start typing in some ideas on things that you would like to see, um, it'll actually give you some suggestions on some potential uh, items that may already have been suggested within the portal too. So you should be able to go in and actually see if it's already there and vote on it rather than having to type out your entire idea again as well. So highly recommend going in, checking that out. We're pretty excited about it. Um, and we really want to hear from you guys. You know, I know people give us a lot of feedback and, and I do put it through, but in the end, they really want to talk to you guys so that if they have any questions, they can really ask our clients on, on um, elaborating on, on the importance on all this. Uh, so please, please don't be afraid to talk to our product team. They, they want to do it um, for your best interest. So uh, we're really excited about that. Um, I guess also just so everyone knows, we are uh, recording this webinar today. Um, so don't worry uh, if there's anyone that you feel needs to, you know, hear my voice talk about some of those definitions again. Uh, don't hesitate to share it with any of your team um, because uh, we'll we'll send out this recording following this as well. Jimmy, before I jump into the system, any questions or anything that you think we should tackle right away? Uh, no, I think a lot of the questions are just revolving around what you're going to go through. So let's, I think everyone's just excited for you to start showing the system. Okay, great. We'll save some of those for as we're going through as well, because I want to make sure 
that um, we uh, tackle those on screen as well. Okay, great. Now, before we jump in, I do have a quick question for everyone, uh, which is around how do your start your how do you start your job creation workflow already? So I'm going to launch a quick poll. And I'm curious to know, do you start with a schedule first? Do you start with an estimate first? Or do you utilize both options already? Um, because this is what I am most interested in. Uh, I'm really interested in knowing, you know, who we've kind of got on the line today. It looks like we've got that estimate first really um, owning it so far. Um, but, you know, there's a few schedule first people as well, which is great. Uh, so I will make sure that we kind of concentrate on uh, that that schedule first workflow today um, to give some of those estimate first people a, an idea. So I'll leave this. Okay, I don't see it change anymore. So I'm gonna. Ooh, okay, it changed one more time. I'm gonna close this poll now. Three, two, one. Okay, great. Let's jump into the system. Thanks everyone for participating in that poll. Super excited. Now, before we um, quickly jump in, I just always, uh, I wanted to let you all know about where the poll is living. Um, and that is, and that's right up here through this question mark up here. So through this question and submitted idea, this is where this new portal lives for everyone. So again, you know, I, I know for myself the other night, I actually poured myself a nice glass of wine and I went through it and I did my own voting on what I think would be really great to see in the future. So uh, highly recommend anyone else, you know, uh, have a nice glass of red and and go ahead and, and do some voting. Could become some creative voting later as well, who knows, um, but definitely go in, check it out. We, we really wanna hear your opinion. Okay, great. Now, before I jump into the schedule first workflow, I'm gonna just kind of walk through, again, I know all of you have probably gone through our training. Um, it could have been a little bit of a while ago though. So I just wanna go and do just a quick review on some of our best practices when it comes to creating estimates within Function Point. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and fill all of this in, but let's let's just actually talk about some things. Obviously, very basics. Any of these blue lines are required fields with NFP, so you know you need to move forward uh, with filling those in or you're not going to be able to create anything in here. Next up, we obviously have our estimate types. So what I'll put in webinar, September 16th. Can we already believe it's middle of September? Um, estimate types. So as everyone also should know, all of these drop downs are editable for you. Um, you can go ahead and create any um, unique uh, terminology for yourself within here that can match your workflow a little bit better. Um, this is required. You can do a lot of reporting on this later on. So, you know, try and keep it detailed, but also simple uh, so that that is easy for you at different times. Um, company obviously is required. Uh, estimate contact, this is not a required field, but I always recommend everyone please utilize this. It helps not only your staff know who your number one contact would be at the co at the company that you are working with. Um, you know, I always like to think of uh, the lottery or, or the bus theory, say we were to lose someone within your agency that keeps that relationship and that would know who your number one contact is. Um, and you need to know who you need to reach out to. It's good to track this. It also allows you to email directly out of Function Point your estimate and invoice um, against those jobs later on. So it's definitely a best practice to go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna use Jimmy Woo as my AE today. Um, if you already have a project active within Function Point, uh, again, that filing system, uh, you know that this estimate and job is gonna be a part of that. You have that option to add it in right away. Um, Right category terms, pretty self-explanatory, but again, you can set those defaults so that those are always um, pre-chosen for you. But again, uh, if you needed to change them, all of them would be available here too. Now, getting back into some of our best practices, delivery date is something that I can't stress enough. A lot of reporting can be pulled based off of this delivery date. And what we recommend this being is the date that you expect this piece of work to be completed by. Um, so at any point, you know that you can come in and pull a list of all of your jobs uh, that maybe are due within a certain time period so that uh, you can also hold your team accountable for finishing it by that time as well. Now, I know that probably a lot of you have schedules, tasks, all associated to that as well, but this just kind of gives you that high level overview um, on knowing whether or not you are hitting those target dates or not. 
uh, the category. This is one that I always recommend um, utilizing as the ways that you plan on billing later. Again, anyone that has listened to my last couple of webinars, um, this is a great way to label um, if it is, again, that retainer, maybe a simple job, fixed price, time material. It will allow for your uh, accounting team to be able to come in at any time um, and go ahead and pull a list of all those and know that they are invoicing correctly because you've already labeled what your agreement is with your client on how you plan on invoicing. So again, this drop down is available through our list maintenance in the admin section uh, and it is editable there for you. Now, there's a few more fields here, work type, client lead and lead creative. And now if any of you are following along in your system, you may not have these here for yourself. These are actually a couple of extra sneaky fields um, that are that they need to be activated by yourself through your admin section. Now the work type is an extra drop down. I have seen this used many different ways by different agencies, um, but it gives you an extra layer of the type of work you are working on. Again, this, this is reportable, um, so you are able to report on this dropdown later on. Uh, so again, brochure, whether or not it's print or digital, uh, you are able to, again, give that extra layer. I have had um, other agencies use it in different ways too. Um, maybe some of our in-house ones, uh, just defining um, maybe different client codes or, or um, uh, and of course I'm, I'm blanking right now, but yeah, this, this, I, we've definitely gotten creative. It's an extra drop down. We can, we can get super creative for maybe you. Um, if you're like, Oh, I just wish there was one more field for me to be able to label what these types of estimates are. This is a great one for doing that. Um, client lead and lead creative. These are going to grab all of your staff that you have within your agency to be able to label as main contacts. Um, against these estimates and jobs. Uh, you know, we've already labeled our AE through Jimmy Wu, but lead creative and, and client lead, I find are super useful to be able to say maybe who the head project manager or, or, or lead creative may be um, on these pieces of work uh, so that, um, Again, if it's maybe one of those larger jobs that's spanning over months or years, uh, and you want to make sure that there's kind of like one go-to person, this is a great way uh, to be able to label that. And then of course, month close and close probability, that leads into a lot of our pipeline reporting. So if you are using Function Point for any of your CRM capabilities, um, that is super helpful to help you with a lot of that reporting as well. So don't be afraid to utilize those. And of course, last but not least is all of our service groups and services. You guys know that this is really a huge core of Function Point. Um, it allows you to track your time appropriately against all of these items. Um, and, and of course, uh, your tasks and tasking lead back to these services um, for all of that time tracking as well. And through our reporting, you can also now report at that service or service group level. So. Um, Again, I anyone that has talked to me, I'm a huge advocate for keeping it as simple as possible. But what's important to remember when you're building out or designing these service groups and services is what you want to be showing um, your client uh, for some of those client facing items. Um, and then, of course, what you need internally for tracking. So both of those those things are, are super important and, and something that we're happy to help you with as well if, if you need any assistance. Okay, Jimmy, I'm kind of talking uh, a lot over here. Any questions before I then dive into that schedules first option? Um, I think I've answered them all, except one is around work type. Um, I wasn't sure if that was a permission that could be hidden from users. You mean if it's been activated and then we would hide it from other users? Yeah, so I think um, there was a question on how do you activate work types in estimates. So I was curious. If mm -hmm. it yeah, could so be to activate from the user. No, it can't be hidden from another user. Um, maybe for those of you that don't know where it is to activate it, uh, it's under uh, admin system setup and system preferences, and it's under track here. And you've got both that lead contact, which has those two extras there, 
and that work type to activate. Now, if you choose to activate it, um, a lot like other permissions within Function Point, uh, people either have access to it or um, they won't, I guess. But with this one, uh, if you have activated this and your staff have the ability to view estimates and create estimates, then they will have access to that dropdown. Does that answer your question? Is there anything I'm missing? No, that was perfect. Thank you. I didn't know that. Okay. Good to know. Um, any other questions that maybe came through? I know you answered them, but that you think would be valuable to tackle on, on the screen? Um, I think there were a few questions around the scheduling um, workflows. I think that would be good. Well, since you're going through next, I think there'll be a lot of people will want to see that. Perfect. Awesome. Great. So let's dive into our next workflow. And that is, again, around schedules um, and starting with that. Again, a huge and important reason why someone may choose this is because of maybe some inaccurate estimating, um, you know, some, some maybe lost knowledge between two different teams on how much time a lot of things take. And so starting with schedules can be really helpful in um, sort of uh, mitigating that process uh, so that you know a lot of what's going on. So to do that in a workflow, again, you can start adding schedules in multiple places within the system. You can do it directly from your company, maybe directly from a brief, um, but I'm gonna go through the most basic way, which is through our main navigation bar here and add a schedule. And as we start here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start from a template simply because uh, for time um, today on our webinar, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, you can create schedule templates uh, within Function Point. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of agencies and like, well, it always changes, like what's the point? It's like, well, the point of creating a template is what I actually, one of a, a great uh, uh, client that I've, I've worked on and I've, I've stolen this quote from him, um, is the, the, the reason you would create a template is to find like your utopian version of what the schedule should look like. Um, nine times out of 10, you are going to probably adjust it a little bit, but you know that this is how it should look. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just choose a, our corporate website schedule here. Um, you know, we've got a few different options. Uh, you can have as many templates as you want living within the system. The only thing I always recommend is that if you're gonna be kind of creating templates left, right, and center, at the end of every year, do a little bit of a cleanup um, and make sure that the ones that are most accurate or, or needed for yourself, you you can go ahead and do. Um, for any of you that have also attended any of my, my webinars in the past for schedules, you know that if you have already created a schedule for a different job and you want to copy that and then convert it into a template, you can also do that too. You do not need to start from scratch to be able to create a template. So I've gone ahead and I've chosen this corporate website schedule. I wanna autofill it from everything in the template already. Um, again, we're gonna do webinar September 16th. Um, it's already pulled through the description and everything too, but all of this is still editable for yourself. So do not worry, even though it looks like I already have some spelling mistakes within my template. So, um, you know, again, make sure that all those are pretty accurate for yourself. Uh, you're then gonna need to go ahead and choose a company within Function Point, um, because of course, uh, you know, through the hierarchy within FP, everything does need to feed back to one of your clients or companies. Um, so uh, make sure that that is filled in. And then of course, uh, projects, um, again, if you have a project and you already know that this is going to be associated with a much larger um, kind of piece of work that's happening, um, you can add it in right away. But don't worry, if you forget to do that, you can go back to the original estimate at any point and add it in. So there's no stress if, if you happen to forget to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. Now, since I have created this from a template, again, all of this has already kind of pulled in for me, which is really helpful. Um, but of course, uh, if you had decided that you wanted to build one absolutely from scratch, you maybe have an Excel spreadsheet over on the side from some existing stuff that you've been wanting to port into Function Point, uh, you can start from an absolutely blank slate and go ahead and start adding in task groups, adding in tasks, um, adding in shared tasks for yourself. Uh, so you have all that capability, but I'm not gonna go through all that today. Um, you know, we have ever, uh, other webinars that go through all that detail. 
But this would be now when I could come in and I can start taking a look at this schedule and making any any adjustments that I need. So maybe for this one, I know, okay, so I've had Jimmy uh, that's going to be doing this, but maybe for this job, um, I know I'm going to actually have Beth go ahead and do that for me today. Um, we're going to come through and we're going to see right away all the... Uh, estimated hours that have already been put in. If we know that some things are going to need to be adjusted, again, um, as we go through design production, everything looks pretty accurate so far for ourselves, except we don't have any hours estimated for client review or client review again. Now, again, the reason those might not have any estimated hours against them, though, would be because um, that's actually time that the client will be spending rather than us. However, you know, for Apple, I know working with them, they're a little bit more um, demanding than some other uh, agencies that I work with. So maybe I'm going to end up putting, I know I'm going to spend a few more hours on this. And so I can adjust accordingly and update some of these tasks for some coordination with them. Um, so now that we've gotten to this point, again, we know that this schedule is looking good. The only thing I would also uh, just recommend that everyone, just be a little bit cautious on is of course the status as of right now it's not it you will be allowed to assign these tasks out to these staff members um, but I would recommend leaving that be for now because this hasn't actually become active work and if you were to change the status from draft to assigned it would assign it out to your staff and trigger them to actually begin working on it and of course you want to make sure that um, you know you've got everything signed sealed uh, with your client first before beginning work um, not to lose any like resources on on uh, through time uh, right now. Uh, so then once it has again all been approved, then you would come in and you'd be able to change the statuses accordingly. Again, through the Gantt view, I always just like to show this view because it's I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I feel like it has really uh, cleaned up a lot of things. I already have a lot of these dependencies set up in here, but you know, again, say in uh, some small adjustments maybe you need to make uh, with some of these schedules. Now is the time to do that um, before you would go ahead and create that estimate and job um, for that agreement that you would have your, with your clients. So, uh, you know, with this, maybe these timelines, it's already highlighting to me that this is red and it's not going to work. So I would be able to move some of these out so that those timelines would be able to line up appropriately and that we wouldn't be crunching any time um, that would help uh, cause us to lose an opportunity to complete some things. So I'll just move that out as well. Perfect. So now again, like I said, so, yeah. this is, yeah, Jimmy. Sorry, there was a question, a few questions around pegs and services. So I was curious if you could explain that a little bit, the difference between pegs on the tasks versus the services that was selected and how that impacts. Yeah, definitely. Great question. Um, so tagging, well, let's, let's actually start with the, the easier option here, which is that service. So the services within your function point are those singular items that would help you to um, complete that job or deliverable. It would be all the, the pieces um, that you have agreed upon with your client to complete. And what you want to do is always feed your tasks back to those original services so that um, so for for all time tracking purposes, again, you could have multiple uh, tasks that would feed up into the service of research uh, because those different types of research may need to be um, broken out against different individuals. Uh, and as they track time, it would feed into the single service and everything would accumulate together. So again, with these ones, we know that we have at least three tasks here for research and each of them have different amounts of time tracked against it. So we have estimated three, 20, and four for those. So we know that um, there's gonna be at least 27 hours that are going to be estimated for the service of research against the estimate. And I'll show you guys that as well as we get into that next piece on how it feeds through. Now, and just one last point to add to yeah. that as well is that that does tie into the rate card that you have set up against the research. So um, once you convert that to the estimate. Mm -hmm. Really good point, Jimmy. Thank you. I um, 
Yes. So obviously all of those different services will have rates associated to them as well, um, which will help you calculate what that final amount would be uh, that you would expect to charge for that single line item. Um, again for for any of you that have have gone through a lot more of the in detail um training you also know that we can have different rates at say an individual level that are also for specific services so it can get quite elaborate in the back end of the system and that is where that is all set up um, for any of you that are working within a, a, an estimate and wondering how that's all calculated it is all um it is all built out back there so that you don't need to worry about what those rates are and, and if things need to change. Great. Next is the tags. Now, tags are a feature that allow you to specifically tag that task in a way that allows you to kind of like group or report or pull um, tags sorry, tasks with that tag. Um, and now it's, I have seen it used a lot of different ways within different agencies. Um, again, something like research and specification and concept um, that has all been tagged in these ways against these specific items uh, because we know that, you know, research finalized to object, objective uh, research and compile graphics they all have these items in common if we ever needed to um, go ahead and pull a list of all tasks that have this tag uh, you'll also see that the specification and concept is feeding now into documentation and writing although they may have a different service sorry a different service as well as well of copywriting and editing um, so it, it does allow you to kind of give that extra layer now I'll be honest, this is really the main space where these tags are living as of this moment. Um, with some future updates, tags should be available in there as well. Jimmy, I know you've been working more with product than I have, so maybe you can speak towards that rather than me putting my foot in my mouth. Um, but uh, tags are definitely something that um, at this moment are not quite useful, but I, I, I hope to see them more useful in the future. Maybe Jimmy, you want to actually speak a bit more towards them. Uh, I, I'd agree with you on that one. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, other ways I've seen tags used is say, maybe if you are phasing some of your different work, um, you know, I've, I've seen phases being uh, labeled in different areas, either through service, uh, sorry, the task groups, or I've seen them used through tags as well. Um, so that's also a, a good idea or option for everyone too, if, if you were trying to think of, of different ways of being able to utilize the tags. Okay, great. Jimmy, before I go ahead and turn this into an estimate and job, um, any other questions? Again, I'm sure you've been frantically answering them, but anything that you thought was really good that we should tackle on screen? Uh, no, I think, uh, yeah, no, no additional questions. Okay, great. Awesome. Well then in that case, guys, it's honestly as simple. And um, you know, anytime someone's like, ah, oh, I don't know how to action something. It, it, it's like 9.99% of the time, 99.99% of the time it's up here in your top right hand corner. Um, if, if you're ever looking for a specific button. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add estimate and job. What this does, it actually brings up that kind of add estimate page that we had already reviewed on that previous page for yourselves. Um, and so again, if there's any specific detail that you know you need to give, you know, we hadn't chosen um, an AE yet or an estimate contact, again, think about some of those best practices um, that I had been talking about on what you should be making sure that you fill in. Uh, we already know this is a corporate website, so I'm gonna label this estimate type as a corporate website. And based off that schedule, I knew that it was gonna be done by the end of October. So I'm going to go ahead and label that. Again, we've got the billing options. This is gonna be time material, adding in those different client leads, um, and then that work type again as well for anyone that was interested in it. Now, as you come down into this area, this is where it's going to show you and actually give you that breakout of what these tasks are now feeding up to into for yourself. So again, we've got that internal service of research, and then these are the different hours that are going to lead up into it. Then we also have the line item of design, tasks that leading up into that, and so on and so forth for yourself. 
If at this point you know that you maybe have some additional expenses that you need to add on, you would then be able to also add it in at this point too. Um, maybe I know I'm going to bring in a freelancer for, for this um, particular uh, website because uh, I know that I just want to, maybe it's someone we used to work with or or something along those lines that, that we know we, we're going to want their opinion and, and some consulting or expertise on. Once you go ahead and you click submit, this is now going to bring you again into that estimate. Everything should already be broken out for you. Again, those three tasks for research, it's already fed into our 27 hours for us. So we now know right off the bat that this estimate because of that schedule is gonna be around $4,400. Uh, for charging. Now, of course, if you wanted to make edits, that is still available to you. If, you know, although we had estimated for um, a certain number of hours for research and we just want to round this up to 30 or, you know, we know we want to round this up to three grand uh, for charging this customer, you still have all of those capabilities. And I know that this is still going to be probably another two grand uh, to work with that um, specific freelancer that I'm going to bring in as well. So you now also have, again, an easily done estimate. You could either leave it as it was, or you can go ahead and make some edits as needed, um, completely up to yourselves. And then whenever you're ready, we have that job details already created for you, and this work can go ahead and get started. So again, it kind of moves pretty quickly once you've, you've finalized that schedule and everything is looking good. Um, now, I had talked about going in and showing some examples of, of those different types of jobs, but I am recognizing, Jimmy, we're kind of at that like 15 minute mark before the top of the hour and we had really wanted to keep this under an hour today. So maybe why don't we sort of just like sum up with any other questions that we maybe have um, or if there was anything particular that anyone wanted to make sure that we went through today. but. I um I feel pretty good about kind of a lot of that detail we went into, so I, I'd love to open the floor for some questions. Yeah, so there was a couple of questions. Um, the mm. first one is um, when we go using the schedule to estimate workflow, um, the when you added the estimate afterwards, it also created the job. So there was a question around if it's possible to just create the estimate only at that point. Yeah, you know what? That is a really great question. Um, unfortunately, at this time, no, you do. It creates both at the same time. Um, you know, that is something that I have mentioned in the past as would be a really great thing for us to change. And, and I have put in ideas for that with our product team. But again, go in and and submit an idea or maybe vote on on a previous one created. And and um, that's definitely something I would I would like to see in the future. So you're saying that the new AHA portal that you talked about in the beginning of the webinar would be great for this? Exactly, yes. All right. Um, the other question is, um, there were a couple of individuals that would like to see, because you mentioned about the quick jobs earlier, how that would kind of look like in the system or how they would set that up. Yeah, definitely. And um, let's quickly talk about that then. So I do already have a job in here, again, talking about maybe a simple one that we would always be able to um, take a look at. And Jimmy, I know that this one was one that you and I had kind of debated about a little bit earlier on the best way of actually doing this workflow. So I'll show it to you guys. Um, now I've brought up this just like website maintenance. Um, job that I have for North Shore Auto Group within here. We're kind of sticking with the website theme today. Uh, and again, this is kind of just like an open standing job that I'm always going to have with NAG. Um, but I don't have a schedule here with it because it's kind of work that's done whenever is needed. Um, you know, we had estimated throughout the year that we're probably going to spend or um, charge them about 25 grand. They're already at about six. 450 um but this is just one of those times they've called they've been like hey you know what we just need this uh quickly done on our website can you go ahead and do that and what i would be able to do i'd be come in look at the job add new and maybe just actually add a quick task where i know like please update x on website I'd be able to put in any detail that maybe needs to be known. Um, again, this is more allowing you to just create a quick task that you would be able to send out to whatever single person would maybe need it. I know that this has to do with maintenance um, on this job. 
and I want it done by the end of the week and I'm actually going to assign it to Jimmy to go ahead and complete for me. And it's already gonna be assigned, so I know that I can now save that. Again, if there were any um, additional pieces of information or like visuals or files that you would want associated with this as well, you could easily just upload, upload it to the task and then it will appear on Jimmy's dashboard. Um, for him to be able to see right away. Uh, maybe just for this example, I'm going to assign it to myself so that I can show you it on my dashboard. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So now this task has been sent out, so I know that um, this is being expected of me. I would be able to come to my dashboard I'll now see this task has been assigned. If your alerts are set up, it would have alerted me either via email or directly in the system so that I would know to come and check this out. I could go ahead, I could click to in progress. I could go ahead and update what was needed for me to update, track that time for five hours, submit that. Then whoever is uh, needing to bill for that job could easily come back into that job at any point, bill for the actuals against it for that five hours that we would need to charge the client. Um, and then uh, again, just any time that they would call uh, for little things like that. It's as easy as just assigning a quick task um, to be able to complete that. Now, again, when Jimmy and I were talking about this earlier, he has a different workflow that he personally prefers to use as well, which I also really like um, because we were talking about the jobs and the workflow around that. That was why I wanted to start by looking at the job itself. However, you also have this quick task option that lives directly on your dashboard as well. So if you know you've just gotten off the phone with your client here, I'm gonna go ahead and just complete this so that it's not living here anymore, submit. Um, so you've just gotten off the phone, you don't wanna navigate or have to search for that job itself. You can actually use this quick task option here and just like, please um, change logo on X, assign it to myself, give that description, that due date again, end of the week. And when you show more, this is how you can attach it back to that original job. So I know that that job was 30330, tab through, it's gonna pull that up for me. I want that um, uh, maintenance uh, service line item there. So keeping a generic uh, service line, um, just again, for kind of that like, sort of more general miscellaneous item um, for updating as needed uh, is really good to keep there. Um, usually the more detailed items are again, when you're building out from that if we're gonna continue using um, uh, websites, uh, actually building out all those pieces from the start of it rather than the maintenance of it later. Uh, and I know that this is gonna take two hours. Again, uploading those files as needed, you would then be able to submit that. And then that will appear on the individual's dashboard again for them to be able to work on it and track time. Uh, Jimmy, anything that you would add to that kind of quick demo I gave? Uh no, not really. Um, I would just say if you are billing time and materials for these quick tasks or quick jobs, uh, I would highly recommend that um, uh, this, this when you select the service just to keep an eye out on that as that will tie to your time and materials bill rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Again, all those billing rates feed back to the service um, unless you've gotten more elaborate with, with specific individuals that would be working on those services. We did have a question from earlier in the webinar that did ask uh, a couple of people asking about campaigns versus jobs and how that would work. Mm, yeah, again, um, great question and what I had promised I would show. So thank you for the reminder, everyone. So as I had talked about the difference between projects and jobs within Function Point, this is where those individual items are created and stored. So again, projects, which is that filing or storing system of multiple jobs and deliverables, um, within FP, and this kind of leads towards that comment around campaigns for yourselves. So this is where that probably that terminology is changing up for you and your team. Uh, a lot of agencies I've worked with, although we use the terminology project in our base system, I have seen this change to many different things, um, campaigns being one of them. Uh, so that is a very common uh, terminology change that can happen within the system. Um, so for any of you that are maybe again looking in your system and seeing campaigns listed here, it is the same concept as that definition I gave earlier for projects. It's just your terminology has changed. 
Uh, and then same for jobs. So jobs, um, I have seen this change to being projects within systems. So it's important to remember uh, that this order will never change on your main navigation bar. This is where they will always live of projects, estimates, and jobs. Um, but again, you may see it as campaigns, scopes of works, and projects, uh, depending on your terminology. Uh, how, do we feel like that kind of answered the question at all, or would you elaborate at all, Jimmy? Um, I would do, sorry, um, I'm answering a few questions here. Yeah, kind of no, that, sorry. Not <laughs> Again. a problem. Um, just curious if you did pull up the corporate branding campaign example there. Uh, you know what? I hadn't. So why don't we quickly take a look? Um, so again, that corporate branding, this is when you maybe have a more elaborate um, job or sorry, <laughs> a more elaborate piece of work that has come through that has multiple moving pieces, multiple deliverables, multiple schedules. Um, so this is our project or campaign, depending on your terminology, that would be storing all of those within it. This would be your high level basic info page of that project, which is actually taking all of the estimated amounts and actuals, and I'm gonna show you first, the jobs list. So we know that there are actually five active jobs that need to be completed um, for this pro overall project to be completed. Uh, I know a lot of you live and die by that job financials page. Uh, so you actually have all of that broken out here as well. And you can expand it as needed to for, again, all those details relating to all these different uh, jobs within the project too. So all of that is here within here for you. And kind of, again, leading back to my comments earlier about if you can store all of this, it gives you lots of great um, reporting capabilities, not only here on this uh, financials page, but underneath the basic info as well. A lot of those totals start to add up for you. So you know that your overall budget, all five of those, sorry, the budget is uh, input manually, but your estimated totals is all of those estimated amounts uh, totaled up here for you. So what you've estimated so far is about $136,000 with a bit extra, um, but the budget you had been given for your client for this entire thing was maybe $150,000. So you know that there's actually still a little bit more wiggle room or potentially more work that could be coming your way as well. Uh, but based off of where everything is sitting so far, um, your actual totals is at about 52,000, almost 53, your costs again, um, where that is sitting and then how much you've invoiced. So there's lots of um, great add-ons available to you. Uh, and again, giving you more of that high level overview of where you are sitting um, for each of these jobs within this project, all kind of looped into again, this sort of one, filing or storing space for yourselves. So I'm a huge advocate for projects or campaigns if, if that's your terminology. So, um, you know, use them whenever and wherever you can. All right, great, Jimmy. I'm sure you are like on the fly with those fingers answering all the questions, but we have about three minutes left. I'm sure everyone has a busy day and I'm just wanting to check in for any last minute things. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Um, I just want to do a quick reminder to everyone that um, our, our marketing team will be sending out the recording of the webinar afterwards as well. Uh, as always in the email, they will also include uh, various help articles that talks about the schedule to estimate workflow versus the estimate to schedule workflow, um, as well as some of the other topics that have been discussed. Um, so do look forward to that. Um, if you would like access to historical webinars we've done, um, you can always find it on our support page. And to access our support page, you can either go to our homepage at functionpoint.com, scroll to the very bottom, and there's a support link, or within your function point system on the top right, where Sophia is navigating, there is a question mark. So there is a help center located. Um, so do please uh, utilize those. Uh, a lot of the information shared today are also elaborated on there as well. Yes. Um, 
Awesome. Yeah. So definitely check all that out again. Um, we're going to be recording this and sending it as well. Uh, my last big ask of everyone is I'm, we are working on coming up with topics for more webinars in the future. Uh, so um, I already have a couple of ideas on some different things, but you know, we definitely want to hear from you. What would you guys like us to present on um, and sort of maybe talk a little bit more about as a group with everybody. So uh, that will also be included in your follow-up webinar. So please, 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 I'd love your feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Um, let us know Let us know what topics you want us to, to cover in, in more detail. All right. With that being said, again, thank you, Jimmy, for being my co-pilot today. It's always a pleasure. No um, and uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a great Wednesday. And I, I hope you, you found this valuable today. Um, you know, it's, it's always, it always astonishes me on, on how many people actually attend. And it's always really great. So... Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you all later.